My Globe News brings global views. Well, listen, it's a very great pleasure for me to welcome you all to this encounter uh, with iGlobe News and the iGlobe News team. Uh, now, as a historian, I thought I would do this welcoming introduction as a, in a historical way. And by that, I mean I'd like to situate iGlobe News in a particular historical moment uh, in time. I'd like to locate it in a particular historical place in space. And I'd like to talk a bit about the people who invented and who have developed the iGlobe News uh, site. Now, let's start with the time. The time we're talking about is the year 2020. We're looking at the pandemic in full swing. That's the big, the big moment. This was the moment of incredible uncertainty. Nobody knew what was going to happen in the world. Nobody knew if the vaccines were going to work. Uh, nobody knew, and above all, this is my point, nobody knew what the job market would look like. Uh, so this is the period we are looking at. Uh, in in more, to be more focused, we're looking at the time after graduation here at the Diplomatic Academy. Uh, in other words, the question for an entire generation was, what's going to become of us? What are we going to do? So I think this is the historical moment that we want to keep in mind, an age of uncertainty, uh, the summer and fall of 2020. Now, what about the place? What about the historical space? Well, first and foremost, here at the Diplomatic Academy, Favoritenstrasse 15A. And if we enlarge from the Diplomatic Academy, we can look then at the city of Vienna. We can widen our horizons uh, to Austria. And then we have to look at the whole world, all the way up at least to Norway, I know uh, for sure. Uh, so basically, this is something that happened, started here. Hence this close connection with the Diplomatic Academy. Then what about the people? The people who started iGlobe News are Diplomatic Academy graduates. And the core group around it uh, started here at this particular time and developed from there. Now, I have an iconic photograph uh, from that period, from the graduation, which I'll hold out here, which is the famous uh, thesis group photograph of 2020. And as you can see, everybody, including the Empress Maria Theresa, is wearing a face mask. And I think this is really, uh, this was the time, this was the place, and these were the people that sort of generated the iGlobe news. Now, it seems to me, as I think back on it, that there are two characteristics of this project that really impressed me. And in a way, for me, they really symbolize everything, all, of the, all the best of the Diplomatic Academy. And the first thing would be the attitude that created I, I, iGlobe news. In other words, uh, certain choices were made by these recent graduates. One of them was to be active and proactive rather than passive and resigned. The other was to be entrepreneurial. The other was to take things into your own hands and in an age of great unemployment and uncertainty to try and do something. So I think these are all characteristics which are relatively scarce in Austria, uh, but the students here uh, put them uh, put them into into act. So the idea was to take advantage of a bad situation, to be active, proactive, to be dynamic rather than to be static, and to try and create and build something new. And Diana, of course, was the founder and leader of this move with this entrepreneurial spirit. And I think that's something, whether you're doing this or anything else, that's something that uh, I encourage more and more uh, DA graduates to adopt this entrepreneurial spirit, rather than to passively just sit around until you become a civil servant and get a pension and die, uh, whether early with the pandemic or later. Um, the second thing is, of course, the second part of this spirit, uh, uh, is it's one thing to create something new. It's another thing to make it work. It's another thing to make it good. And that's the second characteristic of the iGlobe team that I would like to stress. In other words, they are really good. They, have, they really have talent, they have skills, and they have been able to apply them, to put them to work. Of course, that's our dream. Uh, uh, that's my dream as a professor, to see our graduates go actually and use uh, their skills, their talents, and their knowledge in a kind of useful way. And I think why I've been so impressed with iGlobe News is for these two reasons. It has 
an entrepreneurial spirit to go out and do something, to change things, to fight back. And at the same time, it's done so at a very, very high level. And that's an intellectual level. It's a practical level of getting things out and getting things done. And so that's really the reason for this encounter here at the Diplomatic Academy uh, today. The idea is that the now established iGlobe News can connect with our students who are here now. Uh, and that this is a kind of ongoing development, a kind of ongoing, um, uh, it's an on ongoing project. But I remember way back when you started this, uh, you really have a, achieved an incredible amount in a very, very uh, short time. And so I guess the idea today is we'll have a presentation uh, and then a discussion uh, so that those of you who are now facing, well, it maybe it's a little less uncertain, the world today, uh, than it was in 2020, but it's still pretty uncertain. Uh, and so uh, think creatively, uh, uh, be proactive, and put your DA skills uh, to go good use. So uh, many thanks, Diana, and to the iGlobe News team. Uh, thank you all for coming, and I pass the floor back to Diana. Thank you, Professor Rowe, for these really kind words of introduction. Thank you for your ongoing support of iGlobe News. You've been on our advisory board right from the first moment. You were excited about the idea, and you've been supporting us ever since. Thank you for the great invitation to come here today to meet all of you, and thank all of you for taking the time to come here to learn about us, to get to meet us, and then enjoy some nice lunch, uh, cake, and some drinks together, and mingle. And I hope that we can raise the fire and make many of you excited and hopefully you'll become in iGlobe News, at least follow us, become part of the community, but I do hope that many of you will consider maybe even writing a piece for us, pitching an idea. I would be very, very happy um, about that. Today, um, we're just a part of the team that's here today because as Professor Rohr already mentioned, um, we're totally everywhere, we're all over the globe, and that's the good thing about iGlobe News. No matter where you are, if you become involved in, a, in our organization, you can continue working for us, and you're completely independent physically um, from where you work. And um, we have Shane here, a staff writer, and one of the founding group of iGlobe News. We have Murat, a very important guest contributor, and also the head of our Russian desk. My name is Murat Yevrikov, and I'm from Russia. And uh, today I'd like to share with you a little bit about my experience at the DA, as well as uh, working for iGlobe News and writing articles. Um, before coming to Austria and uh, studying in Dubai, at the Dubai Academy, uh, I got my bachelor and master's degree at the Moscow State University of International Relations. Um, and I studied economics and international relations, and it was a really comprehensive program. And I really thought that I learned a lot after it. But uh, after coming to the Diplomatic Academy, I was really surprised by the multidisciplinarity and the um, in multi, uh, multilateral environment that exists here. Uh, the wide range of topics and subjects that are being taught at the DA, including development aid and uh, economics and political science, really opened my eyes um, to what I want to do in the future and what kind of career I want to pursue. Um, all the countless seminar papers, <laughs> all the countless seminar papers also prepared me for the, the work that I'm doing at iGlobe News. Uh, being able to share my opinion freely, openly, uh, at the same time touching some of the most essential topics that we cover in iGlobe News, I really feel that I was given the opportunity to, to speak out and the the skills that I, that I received, that I sharpened studying at the DA, really helped me uh, release my potential. At the same time, uh, studying at the DA helped me understand um, how the international environment really works. And currently, I'm pursuing a career in the international organizations, and I'm interning at the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency. And, uh, all the academic and writing skills that I got at the DA really helped me in my day-to-day -day work, being able to produce concise reports and um, doing all the research is, is really valued. Um, 
I would like to also say that um, Diana has a really good vision and understanding of where we want to go with this product and with iGlobe News. Therefore, uh, almost from the very beginning, she offered me to start a, a Russian desk uh, on, at iGlobe News. And currently we have around 20 articles. And these are uh, articles that allowed us to reach more people with some of the topics that otherwise uh, would have been um, left in the, in the shade because uh, not everyone speaks English. So currently uh, in iGlobe News, we have four languages, German, English, uh, Chinese and, and Russian, and we're still expanding this list. Um, and uh, I'm, I can say that this is a really great opportunity and I'm really thankful. I really encourage all of you to give it a shot because being able to write um, these 800, 900 um, word articles is also a really good skill. And uh, sometimes uh, mundane day, -to -day uh, work uh, can get boring and being able to, to have this, this chance to show my creativity uh, is really great. So I'm really thankful and I'm really uh, happy and great. Uh, and I'm really happy and grateful uh, to call myself a graduate of the Diplomatic Academy. So I wanted to first play a video um, from the four other uh, staff writers who were not able to be here today. And let it roll. iGlobe News brings global views. Hi everyone, my name is Allison Westervelt and I'm a MICE 23 graduate from the US, specifically Boston, and a staff writer for iGlobe News. As an undergraduate at Boston University, I studied Russian language and international relations. I wanted to continue my language studies and broaden my knowledge of international affairs, history, and economics, which is what led me to the DA in 2018. While I was at the DA, I was the managing editor of Polemics. The communication skills I honed while working with Polemics led me to the communications and outreach team of the radiation safety and monitoring section at the International Atomic Energy Agency. After I completed my contract at the IAEA, I returned to the US and now do communications work for a nonprofit international project that helps ministries of health in low income countries build capacity to treat severe chronic non-communicable diseases such as type 1 diabetes and sickle cell disease among some of the world's most vulnerable and remote communities. I'm incredibly passionate about global health but I'm grateful for the opportunity to contribute to the iGlobe News team as a writer and editor because it allows me to keep up with and meaningfully analyze international affairs topics outside of my field and contribute to the discussion about some of the world's most serious global issues. It's also a great benefit that you can work remotely. I found myself drawn to covering humanitarian crises such as Yemen's forgotten war and the dire situation in Afghanistan following the U.S. withdrawal and Taliban takeover, as although these tragic crises continue, they rarely receive the ongoing mainstream media attention that they deserve. iGlobe News is such an important project because of Diana's commitment to publish articles in multiple language that represent many different perspectives on international topics. Not only has working with iGlobe News helped enhance the writing, editing, and analytical thinking skills that have helped me in my professional career, but has also been a fun way to keep in touch with friends and colleagues from the DA. I hope at the very least you sign up for our newsletter and read some of the team's recent articles, but I would also encourage you to consider pitching a story as a guest contributor, as Diana is always looking for new ideas and fresh perspectives on global political, economic, and security issues. Engaging in DA seminars and writing research papers prepared me well to write and edit shorter analytical pieces for iGlobe News. I promise if I can do it, you can too. Thanks so much for your attention and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the event. I so wish that I could be there with you all in person. Hi, my name is Gustav Peterson. I'm from Norway, and I was part of the 23rd MICE at the Diplomatic Academy. Sadly, I'm not able to be back in Vienna today to take part in this event, but I hope you all have a really good time. I'm recording this video from Tallinn in Estonia, where I'm currently working with political analysis and media intelligence. 
I'm also one of iGlobe News' staff writers, and I've been part of the iGlobe News project since the start. Uh, while I was at the DA, one of my favorite experiences was working with the team behind Polemics, which by my second year at the DA was led by my lovely iGlobe News colleagues, Ali and Lena. For Polemics, I wrote a few articles, I did some copy editing, and I had an overall blast doing so. Uh, obviously, when Diana approached me with the idea of starting a similar project, I was immediately on board, and so far it's been a great experience. Uh, there's no doubt that the interdisciplinary nature of the DA has been a great resource when working on iGlobe News. Before I came to the DA, I studied history and Spanish, so my area of expertise was rather limited, but the combination of an interdisciplinary degree and the varied topics I've been able to look deeper into, both at the DA and for iGlobe News, uh, really helped to broaden both my horizon and my area of expertise as well. Um, as I previously mentioned, I work in media intelligence. But when I applied for my job in this field and in my day-to-day -day work, my experience with iGlobe News has been a great asset. Um, in addition, the variation from a normal day-to-day -day routine that the work with iGlobe News offers is both welcomed and not least useful for both my personal and professional development. My favorite part of working with iGlobe News, however, is the liberty that the format gives me to explore a wide variation of topics. So far, I have written pieces about migration, space exploration, riots, protests, espionage, technology, and sports, among other topics, just to mention a few. Um, I've also translated a wide selection of articles into Spanish, which is a great way to maintain my language skills, which otherwise hasn't been that easy in my professional and personal life. Um, overall, I'm very proud and very happy to be part of the iGlobe News team, which consists of a group of absolutely lovely people, if I may say so myself. Uh, and I hope you all have a really good time at today's event. And I'm really hoping I'll be able to join the next one in person. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Goodbye. Hello everyone, my name is David and I've been a writer and founding member of iGlobe News. I want to talk a wee bit about my experience with iGlobe News and how it's helped me in my professional career after leaving the DA. As you will have heard, we set up iGlobe News nearly two years ago after we graduated from the DA. For me, helping to set up iGlobe News has been a great experience. Many of the skills that we learned in that initial startup phase, like website building, coming up with corporate design, and using social media for marketing and advertising, are skills that I've been able to use in my current job. For those of you about to graduate, iGlobe News can be a good addition on your CV and can show you the real-world application of topics and academic subjects that you've studied at the DA. In every job interview that I've been to, even the ones where I've been unsuccessful, the people hiring have liked having a portfolio of my work that they can easily look at. iGlobe News has actually been instrumental in helping me to get a job after leaving Vienna. I worked as a researcher and consultant at a startup management consultancy here in the UK. My now boss looked through my portfolio of articles that I published on iGlobe News and said that part of the reason that he hired me was for my writing ability and the ability to tackle really diverse topics. I've written about everything from vaccines to the German election to the coups in Mali. So don't underestimate the potential of having just a few well-written articles published online. All in all, I'd highly encourage you to think about joining and writing for iGlobe News, particularly those of you who already write for polemics and have some experience. Writing media articles is a different skill to the academic papers that we're used to from the DA, but it's an important skill to develop, and not just if you're looking to become a journalist. In my job, I write marketing copy, I write sales pictures, I, write, I do research writing and research work, all of which require the writing skills which I've honed by writing for iGlobe News. Being able to keep up your writing skills after you leave the DA and develop a professional online portfolio of your articles will be invaluable wherever you decide to apply for jobs after graduating, whether that's in the media sector or whether, like me, you go into a completely different sector. It's also really fun 
if you enjoy writing, and you can cover a huge range of topics. So I encourage you to join the I Love News community and start writing for us. Thank you. Good afternoon, DA community and guests. My name is Lena Krikorian, and I'm from New York. I earned my bachelor's degree at the George Washington University's Elliott School of International Affairs in 2016. Living in DC allowed me to work in notable organizations such as Capitol Hill and the Department of Commerce. After I graduated in 2016, I moved to Armenia where I was a graduate research fellow at Yerevan State University. I published two research papers on regional security dynamics in the greater Middle East and in the South Caucasus, as well as on Armenian-Georgian student inclusion. I wanted to gain a deeper understanding of European politics and diplomacy, so I applied to the DA in 2018. And I studied at the DA from 2018 to 2020. I currently live in Vienna. I was the former editor-in-chief of Polemics from 2019 to 2020. It was an honor and a privilege to lead the DA community in putting what we learn in the classroom into practice. And it definitely prepared me for working for iGlobe News in my previous UN and OSCE experiences, as well as my current research analyst position. Managing polemics at the DA inspired my teammates and I to continue writing on global affairs in a similar fashion. Both iGlobe News and Polemics follow a shorter yet analytical structure than your typical seminar paper, and notably include articles in other languages. After we graduated from the MICE program in June 2020, Diana thankfully approached us with an incredible idea to create our own global news media startup. We built a unique digital platform in Austria an English-speaking and multilingual news outlet on international affairs. Since then, we've recruited guest contributors from the DA and the international community in Vienna, who also enjoy writing on pressing topics in international relations, history, economics, and law. Leading polemics and working on iGlobe News has greatly contributed to my professional life. I love to write and follow the news, and iGlobe News is a great outlet to channel that passion into. I've had the opportunity to write, edit, and publish over 10 articles. My articles have covered a wide range of topics, including but not limited to Azerbaijan's war of aggression against Armenia in Nagorno-Karabakh, the currency crises and dire economic situations in Turkey and Cuba, the geostrategic battleground heating up in the Arctic, the rise of Hindu nationalism in Modi's India, and the upcoming elections in Lebanon. In addition to expanding my own publications portfolio, I genuinely enjoy editing my teammates and guest contributors pieces. I learn more about the topics they cover for iGlobe News by editing and collaborating with the author and our editor in chief, Diana. iGlobe News has been an incredible platform to challenge ourselves to think critically and write beautifully on topics in economics, European and international security, cultural affairs, as well as on the environment and technology. Our readership spans far and wide, and we look forward to expanding our network to include everyone and anyone with a knack for global news and politics, economics, and social affairs. What makes iGlobe News special to me is that it also helps unite our DA community that is most definitely an international one. It's an incredible opportunity and you can work from wherever you'd like in the world. I am recording this message from Vienna, but I'm currently in Yerevan, Armenia. Otherwise, I would be there in person with you all. I encourage everyone to sign up for our newsletter and apply to be a guest contributor. It's a great way to apply what we learn at the DA how to write and analyze topics in foreign affairs into practice. I'm happy to answer any questions and I hope you all enjoy the lunch and our articles. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Um, I know you guys are all probably very busy, so um, thanks again. And thank you to Professor Rowe for allowing us to be here. Um, I won't repeat too much of what all of my colleagues already have told you, but um, 
I also graduated from the DA with all of them in the same year from the MICE program. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona in the US, and I really enjoyed, uh, after being done with the DA, as Professor Rowe talked about, it was a, a difficult uh, period, and uh, I was struggling to find <laughs> meaningful work uh, in Austria after, after school. And when Diana came up with this idea, I thought it was a fantastic idea and a great way to keep myself busy so that I keep my writing skills sharp and just keep up to date with all the current events. And I personally really enjoy writing for iGlobe News because I find obviously all of the news right now is very stressful. And I find it very cathartic if I'm writing about it rather than just thinking about it. And uh, I would say it's also, as they've all said, that it's a great way to keep in touch with other people from the DA community. And I also have learned other skills other than just writing and editing from this. I uh, help manage the social media a bit and I've used this time to kind of look up uh, some of the best practices for increasing engagement with pages and uh, publishing across multiple sources, uh, multiple platforms at the same time. And this has been obviously a very helpful skill that I can then apply later in my career. Um, I would also like to point out that uh, as Diane is going to expand upon in the next uh, presentation, um, the importance of organizations like this is that we can amplify a lot of the voices that don't necessarily get heard. I mean, if you pitch an article to the New York Times or the Washington Post uh, as a graduate student just fresh out of school, uh, they're probably going to <laughs> ignore most of those. Um, when you pitch to a smaller place like us, it gives more voices, more opinions, a chance to actually be online, get out there so more people can hear from you. And I think this is incredibly important, especially when the mainstream media uh, covers all pretty much the similar, uh, same topics. And so if there's something that you think that maybe you haven't seen enough in the news, you can pitch that idea and we'd be happy to help get that out there for other people to see. And I think this is going to be very important going forward. And so I think we can move to Diana's presentation on uh, grassroots media. So the title of my brief talk is going to be Grassroot Media, the Future of Journalism and How Technology is Empowering a New Age of Journalism. Did that work? Yes. So basically, um, those are my slides. We'll have a, a quick discussion, or I'll just uh, put up a slide regarding conventional media, how we all knew it, um, and how new technologies have changed that media. Um, how the role of journalist is changing in that new media that has come, um, which has been developing already for some time, and the whole idea of grassroots media, and we see ourselves also as a grassroots media organization. So there'll be one slide on iGlobe News. So conventional media, otherwise maybe known as mainstream media, news, newspapers, journals, and their online presence um, are controlled by large conglomerates. Um, as Shane already mentioned, the stories you hear on them are usually all the same. The same goes for Europe as well. If you watch the news on ORF or on ARD or CDF, likely you'll hear the same things. I don't know how they do it. Do they have a list they send out it in the morning and say, these are our news topics? Uh, I don't know, but it always seems to coincide. Same thing in the US. Um, you'll have different angles, but if you watch CBS, NBC, Fox, they might have different angles, but they usually do cover the same topics. Um, also entering such um, such uh, uh, media organizations, starting up a new one is, is uh, very costly. So there are high barriers to entry. So if you have the New York Times or the New York Post, um, Washington Post, you name it, um, you have to have printing presses, you have to employ tons of people, you actually need a huge physical office where all these people can come together. If you have telev television um, stations, you need frequencies, you have regulatory hurdles, you have to engage a whole uh, barrage of lawyers and, and tax consultants and hundreds of, of journalists, and you also have to have offices all over the place and reporters who can give you the news. So this is obviously a very difficult um, 
very high barrier to entry. You can't enter these, these conventional media very quickly or at all. Um, which brings me to my next slide, namely, enter new technology. And of course, the uh, latest news is that uh, Elon Musk has taken over Twitter. So that might stir things up a bit. But of course, the whole idea of regulating the internet, not regulating the internet, how free is the internet? What the internet does do, though, is give all of us a chance to let your voice be heard. So we don't need to have expensive printing presses. We don't have to buy a television channel. Um, you can use the internet to disperse your message. And that's precisely where organizations like iGlobe News um, have gone. BEU, and uh, Shane has written some very excellent articles for our on this topic, has been a world leader in um, regulating um, the big tech companies and to produce a level playing field and also protecting consumer rights. The U.S., on the other hand, has been pretty lax, and the big tech companies always refer to Section 230 of the U.S. Communications Decency Act of 1996 and consider themselves platforms and not publishers and are therefore not liable. I mean, the discussion is ongoing in the U.S. as well, um, so things might change in the future. But basically, new technologies has opened new possibilities for new media. Hold on. Oh, hold on. There. The role of journalists also has changed, whereas in the past, if you take uh, mainstream media, as Shane already mentioned, if you pitch an article right out of the Diplomatic Academy to um, the New York Times, I doubt there's much of a chance that they'd be very interested, even though you probably have a lot to say and maybe could even say it better than some of your usual journalists there. So it was a strong divide between the journalist on one side and the recipient of news on the other side. The same goes for television and radio. So it was a, a very um, strong one-way street, um, which only went in one direction. So as the role of media is changing, namely bringing more voices out there, which Shane already mentioned, also the role of the journalist is changing. So if you go onto the internet, there's the, um, they call it the reader turned reporter. I personally like to call it an open news platform, but I guess we're all talking about the same thing. Anyone who's interested, and the articles you write and finds, finds um, the way we approach news um, interesting and important is actually a potential guest contributor for us. So you don't have to be a journalist. Everyone who um, wants to contribute and has the ability to contribute and hopefully writes English well, which all of you of course can write, can become a contributor. And that also goes for iGlobe News. So news is no longer a commodity for large media organizations. So enter grassroots journalism. So one big difference is, of course, that grassroots journalistic enterprises don't have to be run for profit. When you have so many fixed costs like big media, um, you have to generate a lot, of, a lot of profit. You have to sell advertising space. Um, of course, there can be also grassroots media that also wants to generate profit, but that's not necessarily the case because you don't have that many fixed costs. Um, so you can be run not for profit, which also makes you uncorruptible. I'm not saying that all mainstream media is corruptible, but in any case, not having to look at the bottom line does give you more freedom. Also, um, as Shane already mentioned, you have a lot more opinions out there. And what we at iGlobe News, what we want to do is just deliver objective and fact-based news on important topics. And those topics might be, but will not always cover the exact same topics as what you hear about in mainstream media. So as Shane already mentioned, you can really just go into topics that you might not see everywhere over and over again. So there's our website. If you haven't been on it, I hope all of you have. It's www.iglobenews.org. So I encourage all of you to go to our website, read some of our articles, sign up for our newsletter, check out our social media platforms. There's always a very um, vivid discussion on some of our articles, very entertaining, which is also one of the hallmarks of um, organizations like iGlobe News that we engage with our readership. We engage with them, and uh, it's very interesting to see how people actually see the need to engage with the people who actually write um, the articles themselves. So here, I will go through this slide maybe uh, in more detail than the other ones. What are we? 
So iGlobe News is an open, innovative, objective news media platform. So that's how we see ourselves. I don't know how you'll see us, but I hope that we at least fulfill some of those um, criteria. By open, and that's the definition I came up with, by open platform, I mean that anyone who really enjoys our articles is a potential guest contributor. So it's actually endless. You don't have to have a degree in journalism. All of you are highly qualified. All of you can become guest contributors at iGlobe News. So we are, who are we? We are an Austrian media startup and we're actually really proud to be based in Austria. And I think that's really important because often the news about Austria in the world is negative. The big media companies, the New York Times, you name it, as soon as there's some scandal going on in Austria, they really love it. And we see it in addition to what we publish on international news of all areas, our job to disperse positive news about Austria, which we do. We cover positive news and I think it's great. And I know we get lots and lots of hits. Our Facebook platform has been visited over 7 million times. We know we're getting out there. We have a big readership and people also want to hear positive stories. And especially for Austria, I think it's a great thing. And we are an English speaking uh, platform. So we're Austrian media with international roots, as you can see, I'm the only Austrian there, um, with a global outlook. And we're from writers from around the globe. That's Shane's, Shane's uh, sentence there. So what we are not, we don't have a strict editorial policy that also divides us from other media. So we're really open. Um, we all have diverse political views, everything. That doesn't mean we're not the best of friends. That doesn't mean we can't publish um, on, our, on our own same platform. We don't have an agenda. We don't have any official affili affiliations or political interests in mind. And we are not a lobby. We also do not publish opinion pieces as such. Of course, everyone has their own opinion, but we do try when we publish something to be fact-based and to consider all sides of an argument. That's really important when you publish on iGlobe News and I think that's what our readership um, really uh, likes about our articles. What are our aims? We want to inform, stimulate, discuss, and we want to include everybody. No one is not included in our discussion. We want to encourage the exchange of ideas representing a wide range of political, economic, and social views. And as I already mentioned, always consider both sides of the story. In a world which is becoming more and more divided, I think that's not a bad thing because at the end of the day, we live on the same planet and we all have to get along at some point in time. So what do we offer on our platform? Morad has already mentioned it. Shane also mentioned it. All my fellow contributors have mentioned it. Articles. Basically, we started a platform to publish English speaking articles. And then since we got so much positive resonance, we very, very quickly expanded. So now we order, uh, offer video podcasts where we make interviews, we make audio podcasts. Uh, we, have, we have a number of audio articles. Ben has been instrumental in producing the audio articles. Um, and we have strategically used these language articles in Chinese, Russian, Spanish, and German to reach a wider audience. And that has also actually contributed to the success of iGlobe News. Well, it's very kind of you to think that we'll ever get there. Uh, I hope you're right. Um, no, I don't, I don't think we'll ever be an organization like, like the New York Times, just because of where, we're come, where, where we've come from, all of us, and because what we want to achieve. And um, as for, I, I don't know if, if we ever become that big, I, I guess there'll be many more people involved. I still want to keep that open door policy. Um, I think it's, it's what makes us special, and I think that's what attracts a lot of people to our articles and starts really very vivid, dis vivid discussions uh, on, on certain topics and brings them also into the social consciousness. So my hope is that by writing on these topics that maybe mainstream media doesn't cover so closely, um, they'll be more apparent to other people and they'll become you know, more of a topic for conversation. So you can either agree with us, you can disagree with us, but definitely at least you're talking about it and I think that's important. So, yeah, let's talk again when we're that big. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure about that. Do you mind if I add something? Of course, please, Shane. Uh, so, also, I think the key difference is that the New York Times, their bottom line is they want to sell newspapers. And so, whatever they do, it's always going to come down. Are, are we selling newspapers? Are people clicking on stuff? Are people 
people coming to our website. Whereas Diana has, from the very start, uh, wanted to keep it not for profit. And so that is, I would say, another key difference that I think Diana is committed to maintaining that even if we start to get more and more readership, it would most likely maintain a non-profit status. For sure. I, I want to ask that quick point. Um, uh, where do you get your money from and uh, do you pay your writers? Good question. So, yes, we do pay. Um, all, I guess, contributors get something for a published article. So, and also, of course, uh, my, our, my staff writers. Um, as much as we can, we pay, but there's a standard fee that, that we pay. And um, I think that is much appreciated. And I also want to pay it, and iGlobe News wants to pay it, because we do appreciate all the effort and time. It's a lot of work getting an article like this up. It's not something you just write in an hour and send off. You edit it, you know, if you work for polemics, you know. And I think it's even, you know, if you know that it's, you're really out there in the world and everyone can read your article with your name associated, you become very particular about every single word that you put out there. So yes, there, there is payment. And, um, and what was the other? Oh, funding. So we had seed funding from the Austrian Center for International Studies when we first started out. And now we just get contributions from people who believe in our ideal, which is what it really is. So there's just, um, and it's, uh, since we don't have huge fixed costs as such, I have to say um, it's uh, a good business and, and it's not like we're not making money at all. So everything we, we, we get in, we pay out, but it's, um, it's manageable and it's something that, you know, definitely moving forward, um, I intend to keep like this. You know, so I don't want people to have to click through 10,000 ads before they finally get to the article that they want to read. Um, my name is Maria Blumenka. Um, I'm studying at the ETF program. How do you choose which article gets published? About which topic? Um, it's a two-way road, as everything is on our platform. So often, um, they'll just be topics that we find are important and if someone approaches us and says we'd like to write an article um, they can of course suggest an article that they, they feel passionate about but often they'll just like oh I'd like to write something um, do you have any ideas and we have like lists from here to the end of the room with, with topics that we want to cover I mean we'd have topics for everyone in the DA to write an article for us so we have tons of topics that we'd like to cover so um, also in your area but we also appreciate you taking on a topic, as everyone mentioned, that really makes, um, it, it, it broadens your, your analytical skills, your research skills, to sometimes take on a topic that maybe you're not, you know, the super expert in the Middle East, but then you focus on a very narrow topic and you become in that topic, you'll know, you'll know really a lot about that topic. And I think all of our writers have really embraced that idea. I personally also do it, I really embrace it. And um, so it's a, it's a real two-way street. So it comes from the writer and it comes from the editorial side as well. So that's all I can say. Any, would you, anyone like to say something? I'd yeah, like just to add that uh, in my experience, uh, I've both been pitching my own ideas to Diana as well as uh, perhaps working on some of the topics that Diana suggested to help uh, maybe cover some of the more uh, important and um, burning topics. So, yeah, just like Diana said, uh, you can write on anything, pretty much. Go ahead. Uh, talking about it, a bit of a leakage from the DLG, um, you have talked about having no agenda. Well, in how far? The, the, the question is in here, uh, what do you exclude from your list of topics that you don't want to include in your platform? Um, can I reformulate that question? There is no list of topics that we're not interested in. But um, there are articles that at the end of the day um, become problematic to go online. And those are the articles that don't consider both sides of the argument. Um, that's where we draw the line. And um, so, but before we get to that point, I mean, if you come with an article about Martians living in Floridsdorf, I don't think we would publish that, you know? So we are, we are news-based and it has to have some relationship to something going on in the world. 
Um, we're not a day-to-day -day news platform. We just don't have the manpower for that. So often our articles are about current topics, but topics that you can somehow wrap your head around. So if a topic is changing every single hour, that's really hard to write on our platform because by the time you go through our editorial process, things will have changed. We'd have to rewrite that article 20 times before that goes online, right? But any serious news item in all the areas we cover, and frankly, there's almost nothing. Okay, we don't have any cooking recipes or kittens jumping around. Um, apart from that, you know, it's, it's a really open... Um, list of topics that you can choose from. When I say no agenda, I would say everyone on iGlobe News has different political views. Everyone on iGlobe News has different philosophies. But what unites us is the respect for each other, respect for different opinions, and not everything that gets published, I have to agree with, or they have to agree with, or no one has to agree with. But it has to have a really professional, objective, fact-based article considering all sides of the argument. And the only articles will not, that will not get published that don't conform to that high level, high level standard. So that would be my answer. Please. Uh, if I may, uh, I had been wondering about a similar, similar topic. Um, and you see the article has to, to cover both the science in a way, uh, but the, the conclusion is not. That's true. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Quite right. I mean, you have to have an opinion um, at some point in the time, but we're not, we don't publish opinion pieces where you come out with an opinion and all you're doing for, I mean, our articles aren't very long. I don't think we actually mentioned it. We, our usual standard length is 800 words. That's slightly over one A4 page. Don't underestimate how hard it is to say a lot in 800 words. It's a whole lot easier having 20 pages where you can really go into town and describe every little aspect of a topic and summarizing the main points in 800 words. So it can be a little bit longer, but it has to be readable because actually most of our hits are on the cell phone. So it has to be easily readable, like when you're sitting in the bus or waiting for the doctor, or you know, you just have a few minutes to read an article and you're like, oh, this looks interesting. So there, there, is, there are limits to how long your article can be. Example. Of course. So, uh, one article I pitched uh, and wrote was about um, the similarities that I saw between uh, the QAnon conspiracy theory and the protocols of the Elders of Zion, a very old conspiracy theory, um, very anti Semitic one. And I had very strong personal views about it, and the whole thing was about how we need to push it from out of mainstream discourse. And I, it was just a bit too, <laughs> too one-sided and too, uh, too strongly uh, advocating for one side. So then I just took it to a different yeah. outlet. And this was, I mean, was fine. totally understandable. Yeah. Please, I encourage. Also, on the talk, we just, uh, my Short, please. Yeah, I looked through your website and like on your other platforms, and I was really <coughs> surprised, or not surprised, but like uh, your the imagery that you have and the footage in general is like extremely professional. And since you mentioned that you're not profit based, I was wondering like how, or in, maybe a little bit in general, um, how do you just, like generally source for these things? Because that's the way I understand okay. this is done through press agencies, mm -hmm. and how do you do it? Okay. Since you're not profit based or you don't have like a very good question. I'm a lawyer, so I, I do everything by the book. Uh, I know what trouble we can get into if we don't do everything by the book. So right from the very beginning, I ticked all my boxes because I knew there could be big trouble down the road if we don't do it right. Um, that also goes for all the pictures we use. So it took me a long time to find organizations that we can work with that we can afford because I don't know probably none of you have ever looked into buying pictures like from Getty Images but you can pay up to like 600 euros for one pic picture yes not something we're ever going to be doing um, but there are more reasonable databases out there and we do have standing orders there which reduce to a minute fraction of what I just mentioned so it's I don't know like 10 euros or 9 euros per picture um, the only disadvantage with those platforms is they might not 100% always have all the pictures you want, but then you have to just make compromises. So that allows us to have professional 
um, press photos out there, which also conform to all legal um, responsibilities that we have as a publishing platform, so we don't get in trouble. Um, but still, the picture I've gotten to, you know, it's a learning by doing for all of us. We're learning by doing. The picture makes such a big difference, whether someone is interested to open your article or not. So if you don't have good pictures that tell a story, you know, if all you do is publish a map every single time, I don't think a lot of people are going to be clicking on it. So you have to bring the full package of the article, the title is also very important, and of course a picture which people will then engage with because the first thing you see is the picture, then the title, and then they're like, oh, that looks interesting, let's click on it, let's see what they have to say. Yes? Hi, my name is Maria Borok, I'm from NICE2, and I was just wondering, as you have a lot of different contributors and different topics, is there any overarching structure or different categories which repeat? Um, which make it a little bit easier to follow, or is it totally free in the kinds of topics that you publish? Well, we do have issue areas. I don't know if you looked. We have issue areas. If you go onto our website, um, maybe I can open it. Let's see. Every time I do this, something else happens. Let's see. But um, there we go. So if you open our website, voila. There we are. So, voila, we are also very important to have that there. So we have issue areas. Economic, financial, environment. In the news is just like the basket of everything else that we've published on, that we kind of have grouped into those, into those areas. Political, science, technology, and security. And actually, most of the, all the articles we've ever published fit into multiple categories. Um, our software at the moment only allows us to group it into one category. But everyone who's written articles for us would actually like to put it under more categories. So it'll be political, economic, or social economic, or science and political. Um, so we don't have the problem with too few or too many categories. There's, it, it always actually overlaps. And anything you'd want to write that would be interesting for us would really most likely fit into one of those categories. Would you guys like to say something? Or no? OK. Any more questions? Anything at all? Please. Hello, my name is Katla Kleiner. Um, I'm a high student. I'm also currently in the Polar Academics. Um, more questions uh, regarding these topics. Do you have, um, as a staff writer in the science, or can you have a science view of topics? Or is it we started with that. Shane, you'll remember. We started with giving certain people, certain areas, like certain geographic areas. Um, but at the end of the day, we, that totally broke down. So frankly, no. Um, I think at the beginning, also, people were very comfortable writing on certain areas and didn't want to maybe approach so many new topics. That also has totally broken down now. Everyone is excited about new topics. I think the newer, the better. And that has really increased um, what we can publish on iGlobe News. So. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. I want to steal the floor. Um, uh, have you ever had the problem of uh, of your articles being removed from social media because you are very active on social media? Yes. How did you deal with that? Can't deal with it. Um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of power out there for social media, and I wouldn't have believed it until they started doing it to us, to the totally most innocent articles. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just the nature of, of the game that we're in. But the good thing is that we have our own website. So even if they decide, at the end of the day, they've always come around. But there's been times when we had to wait like a couple of months before they, they posted there because they had some internal directive. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting, you know, um, getting to know these bigger uh, social media organizations in a way actually that you really don't want to get to know them. But they're an excellent tool for a grassroots journalism media startup like we are, because um, basically, you know, it's free of charge. So we can be out there, uh, we can um, publicize our articles and reach a huge number of people. And otherwise, we'd have to pay for ads in I don't know where. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity that at some point, I hope we can close our Facebook account, for instance. That's my goal, but I don't think that'll be happening anytime soon at the moment. So let me just...
have Professor Rowe now say some final words. And thank you all for coming and enjoy the lunch. Well, I have a very, very quick uh, final, final word, which is just to thank you, Diana, and you, Shane and Murat, for coming here, to, for making this presentation, for all of you for coming. As I said at the very beginning, I'm very proud of all of this, because this, this is an illustration of what bright DA graduates can do when they put their minds to it. Uh, so good luck with all of this and carry on. So I hope that many of you will be interested to at least explore our platform a bit. And then I really hope that now that we um, have time to enjoy lunch together, we can speak together, get together. Um, and I hope many of you will consider approaching us. I'd be really happy to hear from all of you. Spread the word and become part of the iGlobe News community.